two sets of Christmas lights. I bought them both at the same time. They're a nice golden tungsten type white. And I decided to do an experiment. I did this last year and I have left it pretty much, well, almost exactly a year, actually a little bit more than a year before actually concluding the experiment. And I was doing it for two reasons. I wanted to see how the intensity of the LEDs stood up over time. And I was also interested in seeing how they stood up corrosion wise, because these are the type of LEDs that are fed with AC. So if I turn them on now, I'm running them from the bench power supply, only half of them will light up because their wire does alternate parallel uh, circuits. And to make them flash backwards and forwards, it changes the polarity on just the two wires that are feeding the string of lights. That means that because the polarity is changing, because of the way they're arranged, that effectively they don't see continuous DC across the LEDs. Even when they're lit static, it's actually alternating the polarity really quickly and making them sort of shimmer backwards and forwards at very high speed. So it appears that both the channels are lit. But because it's not just static DC across the LEDs, I reckon that it might reduce corrosion. And I have to say that after one year of being out, this is the most corroded looking LED, and it's still not too bad. There's a little touch of corrosion at the base, but it's not that bad at all. Uh, compared to that, if you'd put the standard strings out that are just uh, run from DC and it's multiple wires to make them flash or just if it's a single circuit, it's just two wires going along the whole string. They tended to corrode quite quickly. Literally within one season, one Christmas, you'd often see that the water had gone in through the heat sh up the heat shrink and it seeped round the end with by capillary action. And then because it had DC across, it accelerated the corrosion like those sort of fake foot care things that pretend they're drawing impurities out your your feet. Yeah, that's uh, that's another video completely, which uh, I might put a link to that video because uh, it shows the effect of accelerated. Uh, corrosion with DC and water. So um, the other thing I wanted to see after the test was the intensity. And let me show you the result here. This set, well, let me uh, connect the other set up here because I just pulled the wire off it. That's better. But I think you can probably see that there's a bit of an intensity issue. I shall twist those wires together better. I've not twisted them properly here. I shall twist them up and stick this back on. There we go. So this is the set that was bought at the same time but has not been used. This set has been running 24-7 for approximately, well, over 365 days. I worked it out at just marginally over 9,000 hours. And if I take the exposure off here and I turn the light off here, you'll see there is a massive difference in the intensity here. It really, it's very visible here looking at it, the camera does flatter all lights, but having said that, you can see that this one is super bright and this one is super dim. So to check out the difference, I just used an app on the phone just as a rough light meter guide. And it showed that when I put it at the same height from the lights and I turned them on alternately and they were next to each other, this one came in at a output of 67 lux. Now that's not a super scientific light level. It's just, it's basically at a height that, that you are currently from the bench at the moment. Um, and then I tested the other one. So this was 67 lux. This came in at seven lux. So this one has dropped by almost 90% um, from when these were new. And it just kind of shows you that, you know, it's worth every so often. Uh, this applies to a lot of LED lighting. You'll see the LED office lighting gradually gets grayer and duller and duller over time. And uh, certainly this one, uh, I had it along the side of the house under the eaves and it illuminated the path. But this one, by the time it got to this year, the path was really dark. And, you know, you had to use a little flashlight keychain to navigate the park without tripping up the path, without tripping over kitties. So, um, yeah major reduction. I'm trying to think what else I can really say about this. The same applies to office lighting. And if you do change, it's worth changing the lights. The same also applies to fluorescent lighting. This is where tungsten lamps maybe win. Because uh, the tungsten lamps would generally more or less keep the same intensity for the full lifespan. As But fluorescent lamps, if you were to have a twin fluorescent fixture and the tubes are really old and one gave out and you put a new tube in, that tube would look so much brighter than the other one. And the same applies if you got a load of LED downlights at the same time uh, or LED tubes and you kept one as a spare. 
maybe a month or so later you put it in and it would look so much brighter than the original because the chips themselves do degrade over time. And it's interesting to know, and this is the first time I came across this in a really obvious manner was the George Square Christmas lights because I used to put rope light up and down the Walter Scott Monument because it looks really good when done properly. And the original LED, we, we originally got white tungsten, I think. And it was pretty good. And then they switched to red. So initially we had red tungsten and it was good. But as with all the tungsten, it tends to go out in sections after a while. So then we got red LED and it went on for a long time. We used the red LED for many years as the pictures will show. But then one year we changed to warm white LED rope light since it was now becoming available. And we put it up and looked at it when we turned it on and it was spectacular. The monument was so sharp. It was just this really bright, warm white, uh, glowing monument, basically. And uh, after the season, I was looking at it and thinking, there's something wrong. It just does not look as bright. And I went to the control system, which can dim these things, but they just normally leave them on at static, f full intensity. <clears throat> and it was like this. It was really, it just looked dull and everything was set up at full. So when we took the stuff down, I had some spare slack in it as a precaution against, you know, uh, damaged ends. And I cut a meter off and re-terminated and put it next to the original, the brand new stuff. The difference in intensity over just one Christmas season, just literally weeks, was like this. It was like really bright, new, really dull, old. And in that instance, uh, it's quite good the supplier did actually replace it all free although ultimately it was going to lose brightness again. I think that's the first time they'd realised that happens. Um, but the, the odd thing is the old red LED, it just kept its intensity all the time because the older technologies like gallium arsenide and gallium phosphide, the older reds and green type colours, they're very stable. They will probably degrade over time, but not much. The modern technology, the gallium nitride, that's the one that's got the blue chips or the bright dazzling green chips or the phosphor ones like the whites. They lose intensity over time quite quickly, actually. And uh, in the case of the chips, the blue or ultraviolet chips with phosphor, it's a sort of double barreled degradation because the phosphor can degrade as well as the chips. And that's sometimes visible as uh, lights going gradually going from, say, warm white or standard white, the, the phosphor degrades and the blues start shining through more pre predominantly and the uh, LED gradually gets bluer and bluer over time. But there you go. It's a significant thing. It does show you that maybe it's a... Keep in mind that these are actually drawing the exact same current. I can prove that. I should prove that to you. Just so you know, there's no shenanigans going on. Let's uh, break out this uh, positive that's going either direction. I shall turn the power off. I shall put this little clamp meter, I'll keep the cables well away from it, so we get a nice clean reading. And I put a little clamp meter over it, set to DC current, uh, zero out, and if I turn the lights on, the bright circuit is drawing about, say, 90 milliamps. Now, I'll turn it back off and I'll put it on the other circuit here, the dim circuit, and null that out and I'll turn it back on again and it's actually drawing slightly more. It's drawing about 99 milliamps, 100 milliamps. So this is the dim set is actually drawing more current than the bright set just because there's always that slight variation in the uh, current through different, I guess, different batches of LEDs, maybe, which is also possibly a factor. Maybe I should have tried these against each other when they were new, but either way, I know that these did look just as bright as these when they were new. And it just shows that, you know, they're, keep in mind that it's drawing the same amount of power. It's a tenth of brightness. It just says, suggests that it does make sense every so often just to basically treat these as a consumable item and every so often just ditch them, just, you know, scrap them and replace them with new sets because you're going to end up with, for the same power, you're going to end up with a much sharper, brighter display. So there you go, LED degradation. I shall uh, turn this light off so you can marvel at the difference in intensity here. I shall put them. Oh, I've just shorted that out. I shall put it like that. Uh, and that means that I can pop little subscription type things up at the top. Well, there you go. Double barreled. Um, 
Oh no, I've shorted out again. Oh, I'm not doing very well. And the bench supply set up quite high. Let's just abandon the video right now.